Hey, welcome to today's video. I'm Prof Omar, and today we're going to talk about a problem that deals with the digits of numbers and a weird expression involving them. So the question says, let d of n be the number of digits in the positive integer n, evaluate the sum n equals 1 to infinity of 1 over d of n factorial. Hmm, strange. Uh, okay, so one thing we can do with this is there are various numbers for which d of n is the same. So for example, 100, d of n is 3. 3 digits in 100, but d of n is also 3 for numbers like 925 and 876. So what we can do is take a, make a chart where we keep track of positive integers n and this value d of n and then ask for those positive integers what the total contribution in this sum is. So let's make a chart to do so and then use that to figure out a way to write this expression um, that in a way that might be more amenable to finding the actual sum. Okay, so first, uh, the numbers for which d of n is one are the numbers that have exactly one digit so those are the numbers between 1 and 9. So the total contribution of these numbers is the number of them, which is 9, times 1 over 1 factorial. Okay, now let's look at numbers for which the number of digits in them is 2. Those are the numbers between 10 and 99 inclusive. There's exactly 90 numbers in this list. So we'll see in this sum, 1 over 2 factorial appearing exactly 90 times. All right, similarly, the numbers with three digits, so the numbers between 100 and 999, there's 900 of those numbers. So the contribution of 1 over 3 factorial in this sum is 900. And then 1,000 to 9999, all of those are four digit numbers, so we'll see 1 over 4 factorial 9,000 times, etc. So this sum can be rewritten as the sum of all the things that we see along this column right here. So I'll write that out over here. It's 9 times 1 over 1 factorial plus 90 times 1 over 2 factorial plus 900 times 1 over 3 factorial, plus 9,000 times 1 over 4 factorial, etc. All right, so let's find a way to simplify this expression and maybe um, work toward getting an explicit expression for what this sum that we want to evaluate is. Okay, so first of all, we can think about rewriting these. We notice that we have powers of 10 that are appearing as factors here. Um, so we'll factor out the 9 first of all, and then we'll get 1 over 1 factorial, plus here we'll have 10 to the 1 times 1 over 2 factorial, and then here we have 100, which is 10 to the 2 times 1 over 3 factorial, plus 10 to the 4, uh, 10 to the 3, sorry, times 1 over 4 factorial, etc. And uh, to make things match up more nicely, we can multiply all of these factors by 10 so that the exponents match the things that we're taking factorials of. That might make things easier. If we multiply by 10, we'll need to divide by 10 on the outside. So we'll do that. And we'll have here a 10 to the 1 times this, and then increasing all of these subsequent exponents. etc. Okay, so now the question is, what is this expression right over here? Well, luckily, calculus gives us some help. If you look at this, this expression looks like x over 1 factorial plus x squared over 2 factorial plus x cubed over 3 factorial plus x to the fourth over 4 factorial, etc where we've evaluated this expression when x equals 10. Okay, but if we were to take this and add 1, 
This is the Taylor series expansion for e to the x. And this works for any value of x because the radius of convergence of e to the x, um, the power series for e to the x is um, the entire real line. So because of this, this expression right over here must be e to the x minus one. And for x equals 10, that gives us that the expression in the parentheses is e to the 10 minus one. And then together with this nine tenths, this gives us that the sum we're interested in is nine over 10 times e to the 10th minus one. It's kind of interesting that we can get an explicit number for this expression, which might not have seemed like the case um, at the beginning. And I think one of the things I like about this problem is these two pieces that work together. One is thinking about what keeps the expression that seems kind of mysterious constant and then grouping things together so that you get a way to write this sum that's different than what you saw before. And then using that together with some calculus, you're able to get an explicit expression for the sum that you're interested in. Great, so I hope you liked today's video. If you did, click the like button, and if you'd like to see more videos like this, subscribe to the channel and click the bell for notifications.